Lovely to meet you, Linda. And you too, darling. Lovely to meet all three of you. Are you talking to my face or are you talking, talking to... to... <laughs> you all look fantastic, amazing. We, we thought we'd, you know, make you feel at home. So well, that's it's like great. the 70s and 80s. You definitely have pulled out all the stops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably that's thinks like he's in Madame Tussauds, actually. It's a, uh, <laughs> something. Or something Did you? Like I'm sorry, I'm just sort of like <laughs> distracted Did you ever get by... to meet any of us? Well, I, actually, I toured with Cher. Oh, did you? Actually, and, yeah. and yeah, and, Sh and Cher had a wig room full of wigs, full of hundreds of wigs. Uh -huh. and, and actually, you look better than Cher. <laughs> <laughs> Do. She actually had a wig room, and when she went on stage, anybody could have been under there, really. These gigantic wigs <laughs> and things. But, but you, know, you all look fantastic. You look, you look great. We've made an effort. Yeah. 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 yeah we've given it a go. What, I mean, obviously, we were sort of reminiscing, and we're going to be reminiscing throughout the show about our thoughts of the, the 70s and 80s. What, what are your thoughts of those times? What stands out for you? Well, I mean, I, it, was, it, was a, it was all so quick and all so fast, yeah. because we had such huge success so quickly. And so it was like a madness, really. Everything, yeah. you know, from TV show to touring abroad to doing this, that and the other, and promotion. It was like a whirlwind. So you never get a chance to really sit back and really enjoy it. So it's not till years later that I can actually enjoy myself back in the 80s. Yeah. It must be if, so strange because you like. you're iconic to us because we were watching you do all yeah. that. Yeah. 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 While you're in it, yeah, you're not really... And 1981 was kind of Tainted Love, wasn't it? 1981 was Tainted Love. And so then it was a succession of hits. Tainted Love, Bed Sitter, Sell a Wave Goodbye, Torch, yeah. What. And it all was so quickly we're in and out of hotels and things so it's only like years later when I had my second number one with Jean Pitney which is about eight, yeah. eight, 89 then I could enjoy the success a lot right. more because I'd kind of calmed down Take a bit a then relaxed yeah. sat back and also and working with Jean Pitney he was such a consummate professional yeah. yeah that you kind of learned so much from him nothing troubled him everything yeah. was very calm, calm yeah. Yeah. easy you know everything went wrong it didn't matter whatever you know it was yeah. okay you know. looking at you there that photograph that just went it's a really contemporary look actually it is you know when you it's look at that now back, isn't it? you it's were way ahead of your circle. time yeah, I yeah. think I think fashions get recycled now and everything yeah. kind of about the seventies, the the eighties. It's all mingled in, in in together. And people looking for the seventies and eighties, especially fashion and music, as a, a kind of it's it's a retro thing because you kind of wonder what is really new, what is really yeah. now, and it's yeah. all a mixture of things that have really gone before. People mixing and matching. So who was your big influence, your big early influence? Well, well I grew up in in the seventies, of course. So I, I was influenced by seventies music, like like a lot of my contemporaries who were the same time as me, the early early eighties pop stars. And I could, of course, you listen to kind of Roxy music, David Bowie, oh, um, Mark Boland, yeah, Alice Cooper, all those kind of, you know, and, and also the, the, the time of the disco, punk, everything happened in the 70s. All these yeah. amazing musical things happened. And I took in all, all those different Did things. Did you have a big and, Bowie moment, though? Well, I mean... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's so lovely, that story. They, when they, you met Bowie, oh, Bowie you well, well, Yeah, well, I, I, went, I went to see Bowie in concert when I was about kind of 16, 15, 16. And I got dressed up on the way to, uh, to, to Liverpool. I was yeah. on, on the train. I was all dressed up and everything. I had glitter on. I put stuff in my hair and everything with, 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 with my mates. And we got on, and uh, these guys got on at a certain stop and everything in Liverpool, very kind of rough area. And, and they beat us up. Oh, my God. They did. I mean, but, you know, we were having such a good time. We didn't really mind. I was, was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to see David Bowie, you know. So I kind of went, I kind of, at the concert, I was down, down the front. David Bowie was singing Rock and Roll Suicide, Give Me a Hand, Brilliant. Give Me a Hand. And I was down the front, and I reached up my hand covered in blood and glitter and David Bowie went, give me a hand, you know. And it was a glam rock epiphany. It was a glam yeah, rock amazing. moment. And, uh, wow. So I, I didn't feel the kind of the bruises and everything else, you know. It was like, it was all, it was all part of it in, yeah. in those days. Now you, you're, um, wow. you, you brought out a new album. Um, yeah, Hits and Pieces. A brilliant title, by the way, which is which is fabulous. <laughs> they're, they're all, all the hits, the, the really big hits that everybody knows. I've had like 13 top 30 hits and a lot of kind of top 40s and yeah. other kind of lesser hits as well. And they're the pieces. Yeah. They're the kind of medium hits and a couple of hits that I thought should have been hits. Okay. But maybe they weren't as big as I wanted them to be. But all the big songs are there, the, the big brilliant. hits are there. And the tour starts in um, on the 22nd at the Roundhouse and that's the Sweet. Hits and Pieces tour. And it's what it says on the tin, really, yeah. Andrew. It's like, it's like hits. And also, the hits you're giving your fans exactly what, what they, they want, want yeah. because that's yeah. what we want to hear when we go and see you. We well, wanted all those anthems that we were all singing along. No yeah, one yeah. else can do on. those songs like you, yeah. and that's what they want. The thing is, I always respect the fact that whatever you do in your concerts, whether you're doing your new album or you're doing your new record or whatever, if you do those songs at the end, you've got to respect the people, whether you've sung them a million times or not, there were people who had their first romance, yeah, they got yeah. married, they had their first breakup, they were at school, they grew up, and everything, they, they had them to, to those songs. 
Yeah. So they have kind of it special memories, yeah. and you can't tread on those memories. No. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you have to like respect that. And whatever you do in your concert, you can do your B-sides or your new album, your arty thing, whatever. You do those songs at the end, and everyone goes, we love you, yeah. and that's great. Yeah. Thank you for doing well, that. Well, do you know, Mark, we do. We do love you. Thank you for coming on today. Thank, Thank you. Hasn't so it been much. wonderful? Thank Not you. long.